You're welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Business Incorporated. We're live to you from Channels Television in Lagos. To the crude oil market now, where oil prices climbed further above $52 a barrel, supported by a drop in U.S. fuel inventories, though gains were kept in check by ample crude supplies even as OPEC plans to cut output. Brent crude reached a 2016 high near $54 on Monday, underpinned by OPEC's September 28 deal to reduce oil production before weakening on rising U.S. crude stocks. And as the Organization of Petroleum Exports and Countries' own numbers showed, output is still rising. Global benchmark Brent crude rose to $52.45 in early trade, with U.S. crude at $51.02. U.S. inventories of uh, distillates, which include diesel and heating oil, fell by 3.7 million barrels, the government's weekly uh, supply reported on Thursday, while gasoline stocks fell by 1.9 million barrels. And Goa in India is gearing up to welcome leaders of five of the world's biggest emerging economies, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi likely to push his drive to isolate Pakistan and rally the international community against cross-border militancy. Preparations are on the way in Goa, where Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is to host leaders from Brazil, Russia, China, South Africa for the BRICS summit and highlight security issues with neighbor Pakistan. The western beach state has been decked for the event with roads being spruced up Posters welcoming the leaders are adorning major boulevards and security has been tightened to unprecedented levels with anti-aircraft guns mounted on the beach next to the venues. Two of the best five-stars resorts have been chosen as the venues to host the two-day event from Saturday, October the 15th. The leaders of the BRICS nations have voiced lofty goals from rebalancing the global economy to giving the developing world more say in the G20 and IMF. But while they together make up nearly 20% of the global economy and have much in common, they also have many mutual rifts. Chinese president is unlikely to have much interest in casting Beijing's alliance with Pakistan into doubt. The final summit declaration is expected to repeat earlier condemnations of terrorism in all its forms, say diplomats and analysts but avoid leveling blame over tensions between the nuclear and South Asian rivals. One of India's leading China experts and chairman of the Center for East Asian Studies at the Nehru University, Professor Srikanth Kondapali, said China's position would become increasingly uncomfortable if it continued with its partisan support to Pakistan. You can make a statement in the BRICS saying we condemn all forms of terrorism and, the, uh, and in the same room, the newspaper says uh, China is blockading uh, the UNSC resolution related to Masood Azhar or to Zaki's case. I mean, it looks very odd for the Chinese to convince the international community that their position is not universal. One of the major takeaways is the credit ratings um, monitoring uh, in these countries for macroeconomic stability uh, aspects. Uh, second is the Agriculture Institute, which would uh, also provide for employment and also overall sustainable development practices. Energy related is another uh, aspect which I think is going to be the focus in this area, uh, especially in renewable energy resources. Uh, so these are some which we will possibly see in the uh, Goa summit uh, coming out with the joint declaration. BRICS leaders will also support plans agreed by their national security advisers to create three working groups to cooperate on cyber security, counter-terrorism and energy security. Let's take a look at the FMDQ uh, interbank foreign exchange market now for currency trading today. Diana Egolu is a forex dealer with Stellan Bank and she joins me on the program. Diana? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, let's talk about uh, the value of the Naira against the international currencies. How is it trading today? 
Okay, as the interbank yesterday, the market closed at 304.50, and we think that's where market is going to close today. And then the central bank is doing a special auction today um, called the secondary market intervention sales, where they have asked banks to send bids for raw materials and machinery, and also for agricultural chemicals and for airline industries. So CBN is looking at clearing the backlog of matured effects obligation in this sectors of the economy. How much intervention is the central bank doing and how much is the backlog that it's clearing? We don't really know what the backlog is, but we know that on a daily basis, central bank has been selling $1.5 million in the interbank to meet the obligations. So are we... At the end of business today, I will know what the backlog will be, but we are hoping that it should not be in excess of a billion dollars. Okay, so is the demand for Forex uh, being met, demand from end users now by the banks? No, no, no. It has not been met because you know what has been happening? The, the oil prices have been going down and our reserves of the country have also been going down. And we're not getting reasonable inflows from the international investors. So that's why we're not able to meet this demand. But at least the CBN is trying to make sure that every day something comes in, into the interbank to take care of um, um, important obligations. If you look at the estimate, how much do the banks receive from uh, requests by end users? How much does the bank or do the banks usually get in terms of what amount of forex uh, from the uh, from end users? Uh, you know, the request where uh, this is like the period to pay school fees. Most of the demand coming now is actually to pay school fees for children who are studying overseas. And we also have uh, most of the demand coming from the manufacturing sector. So if I can give an estimate, it should be in excess of $500 million if you look at it bank-wide. Mm. All right, thank you so much, Diana Egolu, a Forex dealer with Sterling Bank, giving us insight into today's interbank Forex markets. And what has been hailed as the world's first commercial regular drone delivery service is beginning uh, drop-offs in Rwanda. The operation uses fixed-winged drones that automatically fly to destinations in the central African nation. They release small packages attached to parachutes without needing to land at the delivery points before returning. The technology promises to make deliveries much faster than had previously been possible by road. And Gabon's cabinet has cut its 2017 budget by over 5% as persistently low crude prices and falling output pressure the oil producing Central African economy. Next year's budget will drop to 2.4 trillion CFA francs. That's an equivalent of $4.2 billion in 2017 from 2.6 trillion. Uh, CFA francs this year, citing a drop in oil prices and production in the OPEC member. It comes after a small budget drop in 2016 and a 14% drop in 2015, both due to a steep drop in crude prices since 2014 and depleting oil fields. And that brings us to the end of Business Incorporated. Thank you so much for watching. We do appreciate your time with us. We hope to see you again same time on Monday. Do enjoy your weekend. Ambola Jia Bye-bye.